Okay, hi everybody, welcome to the new lecture series this year. Um, great to see you here. I would like to invite Professor Gregory Prestakos, the Dean of the House School, to say a few words about Jim Cummings. Uh, good evening, everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, you know, the Heath uh, Lecture Series is the series that uh, we feature every year. Uh, very distinguished speakers from outside the school um, who have done um, exceptionally well in their careers and who have done things that really have a lot to do with what we teach our students here. So I'm very happy to welcome today Jim Cummings. Uh, Jim Cummings is an innovative, award-winning photojournalist. Uh, and he will talk to us about technological destruction and the dis technological disruption that his industry is facing uh, using all the technology that has been developed in the recent years. Uh, he's taking the lead in driving this technological change by using at risk the latest smartphone technology and identifying and capitalizing on unique smartphone applications to produce high quality videos and photos to meet customer demands. Jim is one of a handful of photojournalists who is leading the way and embracing this technological change. Uh, Jim initiates projects, explores the technology, is not afraid of change, and is constantly open to learning. Uh, Cummings initiated many high-profile projects, many of which became magazine covers for Newsweek, Rolling Stone, and Life. Jim also worked as a photographer for the New York Times, Newsday, the NBA and Black Enterprise magazine, during all of which he was one of the first to embrace the latest technology in his field, paving the way for others to follow. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very happy that Jim is here, and I would like to invite the award-winning Jim Cummings to the podium. Greetings, my name is Jim Cummins. I'm an image maker, still photography, videography. I also do some consulting. I've also had the pleasure of working as an illustrator, as a draftsman, editor for newspaper and magazines, a signing editor as well as picture editor. Um, It's, it's, been, it's been a challenge. It's, it's a little difficult for me speaking up here. Being, being in front of people is not taking pictures. Um, very fortunate in the parentage that I had that led me towards all the things that I'm doing now. One mother, one father. Um, also, 11 years of art school helped quite a bit in um, being able to see challenges and being able to, to do different things. Uh, four years at Museum of Modern Art, four years at the Art Students League, three years at the High School of Music and Art, uh, and a year and a half, maybe two years at uh, SVA. My first job as a teenager was with a commercial photography house called Hagelstein Brothers. And at that time, what we did was we worked with 1114 view cameras on a rail, on a 12-foot rail. And what you did was you took an 1114 holder, put it in, pulled a slide out, took the, uh, you took a light reading with a light meter, okay, separate from the camera, took the slide out, took the lens cap off, went to lunch. By the time you got back from lunch, you had a picture. Today, in the same amount of time it takes to order lunch with a smartphone, you could take a picture, Photoshop it within the camera, uh, take an, a second look at it, send it out to the client immediately by phone. Okay, that's how far it's come. I guess the biggest statement I'm gonna make right now is that like DSLRs are gonna be replaced by the smartphone. It's come to that point. Uh, Seven months from now, maybe even less, maybe even after this lecture, what's going to happen is that pro photographers are going to be using smartphones as compared to DSLRs. DSLRs right now, for me, are just a paperweight. For the last nine months, 
I've been using just a smartphone. This is it. Okay? My camera bag consists of this and a tablet. This is it. This is what I take on assignment. Okay? With the new smartphones that are out, not only can you take a picture, but you can do a certain amount of Photoshop within the phone, um, any, just uh, effects, anything that you might want to do. Um, Photoshop that, download it, send it to various places. And in many cases, the client wants material right away. I've been in situations where I've been using this, and you know, also, let me remark also that the video side of this is very good as well. This is a very good video camera. It's 1080 by 1920, which is high definition. Um, in many cases now, what photographers are going to have to do, this is going to require a different set of, set of thoughts. The first thing that came along was um, autofocus. Okay? These, these are changes that are big in photography. First thing that came along was autofocus back in the 80s. Uh, I did an article on it in Pop Photography, December of 88. Um, where it was showed what can be done with autofocus. People said it was going to go away. It didn't go away. Nikon lost 43 percent of the professional market because they didn't pick up on autofocus. This is what made them number two as far as a camera company out here. The second change that came along was digital. Okay, no film, no film in the camera. All right, a lot of people said that wouldn't last. Uh, my photo editor called us into a meeting one day and said, uh, seven months, uh, we're going to be uh, changing to digital. I said, three. He says, no, seven months, Jim. He says, I don't know why. you." So, okay. A month went by, and uh, he calls us into another meeting. He says, we're turning to digital tomorrow. You know, everything that you do now is going to be on, you know, on a digital basis. The fourth, the third big thing now is going to be this, the smartphone. Okay, this is a 41 megapixel phone. Okay, that's a lot. That's the highest out here. If you're considering doing this professionally, this is the phone to have. Okay, it's an Nokia 1020. By show of hands, how many people here have smartphones? Okay. How many people take pictures constantly with their phones? All right, here's the thing, the other thing that you need to know. Assignments are not being given out the way they used to be, all right? From newspapers, magazines, TV. Why? Because of social media, Yahoo, um, <clears throat> any of the social media uh, medias that are, that are out here. And the reason for that is that people are coming to social media with self-assigned events, okay? In other words, um, somebody give me a topic. New York Marathon, all right. Can you think of a different way of covering the marathon? Yeah. You can cover it with this. As a matter of fact, if, if all of you have smartphones here, you can cover it with, with a smartphone. You can attach it to a helmet. Uh, you can set it up on a tripod. You can watch runners go by. There's a number of things that you can do. <clears throat> but this is the way things are going to go. If you don't believe me, Count around, you know, at the hands that were raised at how many people here have smartphones and how many people are using them. So you can self-assign with these things. You can't, you know, you, know, you don't just have to just, uh, you can self-assign and take it into some place like CNN, NBC, you know, phone it in, all right? You can combine, it's, the different mindset is that you can combine stills and video on these things, which you could not do before. Because most of the time, you'd have to, if you want to do stills and you want to do video, it's two separate items. Everything comes under this now. Everything comes under a smartphone. So keep this in mind. It's not just, how can you say? It's, it's what you do with this, all right? Now is a more creative time than ever because there's so many things that can be done with this. There's so many things that can be done as far as tying in um, video, stills, and smartphone, telling a story, you could do a movie. Do I have any questions?
at this point? Okay. The files you get, are, are they going to be uh, too large to transmit by, by uh, the, the internet? Okay, the question was, are the files very large, <clears throat> too large to transmit? This particular phone takes two separate files. One is like a five megabyte, four megabyte file, and then it takes a higher file, which it preserves. Because trying to transmit an 18 megabyte file is kind of difficult. So what you get is, within the phone, you still have 18 megabytes. So you have a large file. One of the pictures, can we get the other, uh, the, the uh, smartphone file? Thank you. I've been very fortunate in my career, which spans about 50 years in this business. I've been able to do things in three different areas of photography. Sports, work for Sports Monday quite a bit, New York Times, Newsday. Entertainment, work for Atlantic Records, Capitol Records, Savoy, you know, just about every major record company. And then uh, journalism, I've worked for a couple of newspapers. I still work for The Times. I've worked for New York Newsday, Washington Post, various places, and I've, I've been able to, at the same time, be able to present and experiment with different situations the way I feel would make the best picture. I've been able to try different concepts. I've been able to try all sorts of, all types of equipment. Everything from uh, zoom lenses to uh, color film. I've been able to try concepts such as we, uh, one time the NBA calls and said, Canon is now our sponsor. Can you think of something that we can do with them? So my immediately thought of setting up a tandem. Tandem is a six camera system that's run remote. So for the 80 All-Star game, I set up a tandem. Two cameras in the ceiling with 250 exposure backs, one camera on each backboard, and two cameras on the floor. This allowed me to cover the entire game sitting in one spot, running it from one box. Okay, that was a bold move. Okay, but it worked. The pictures went out almost immediately. I mean, it, 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 there wasn't anything left by Tuesday morning of pictures because it went out immediately to everywhere. Another time, set up a camera on an official. This was a difficult one to do. Um, the officials, the head of officials, didn't want to hear about, you know, oh, no, we can't do that. You know, we can't set up a camera on an official. So I went to the commissioner, and he said, whatever you want to do, he said, do it. So we set up, we took a sure shot camera, which at the time was the smallest camera going. We hooked it up to a uh, eight track recording uh, motor, which pressed the shutter, and the holder that we had on the official was made out of a wire hanger. And we put it on his belt, and this was the first time that something like this had been done as to where the officials on the floor and he's catching everything. This is the first time a camera was on the floor, was on a field of anything. And this, this really uh, sent things on their ear. Other things I've tried was with zoom lenses. At one point, people said, uh, zooms won't do it, but I got tired of carrying a camera bag with a 35, a 50, um, a 135, a 200, Two motorized cameras, uh, that's, some, that's heavy, that's heavy. Is there anybody here, is there, is there a photographer in here that has a, a camera bag, has got like varied lenses? Have you got them with you? No, no. Okay, John? Yeah. Okay, um, show them what you have in your camera bag. Okay. okay. I don't have a lot of lenses on today. Okay. Uh, I've got a flash, uh, no, I, just, I emptied it up because I was coming in, but a flash, I usually have two or three lenses with me, flash, and some other stuff. John Brathwaite usually has like several lenses. Okay, um, what do you carry? Uh, normally uh, the, the wide uh, of normal and a uh, 7200 zoom. Okay, to me that's too many. Cam that's too much. Okay, I'd rather walk around with this thing in my pocket, and somebody says I need a picture, you know, and you know take it out and be able to do what I have to do. In addition to which, the client a lot of the times I'm able to be at an event, photograph like this event right now and send it to the client while this is going on, okay? You can't do that with that. You know, people ask me like, what kind of camera do you suggest? I say, buy a phone, get a phone. 
And the reason is, you can't make a phone call with a camera. All right? And in many cases, like, a client will ask me, they say, well, uh, you know, photograph the event, get the event in hand, and I'll, you know, they say, well, I want you to do video as well as stills, put a piece together, and I need it. And I say, well, when do you, you know, when do you need it? How soon do you need this? And the client will tell me, I'm double parked. When you hear that, then you start thinking, you start thinking in terms of carrying a lightweight system. This is it. This is what it's going to turn to. I know that's a bold statement, but this is what it's going to turn to. And if you don't believe me, look around. Go, any of you go, how many people go into New York? Okay, just about everybody here. Look around and see how many cell phones are being used. You see everybody with a camera. I mean, there's a lot of people with cameras, but a lot of people, what they do is, They'll take a picture first with a camera, and then they'll take a picture next with this and send it, send it to their relatives in Vermont or wherever they're from or wherever they want to send it to. Let me get back to uh, social media. Newspapers fired, I do mean fired, and it's kind of cruel too, their photographic staff from several major institutions, all right? And what that left was no material, they, they didn't have to pay anybody because people were coming into the paper and saying, well look, uh, I've got pictures of my cat. Uh, I've got pictures of uh, you know, this event here. You know, um, so why bother to hire a staff of people when you can get all the material from folks like yourselves? Okay, anybody here can send material to a paper, can send material to so any, any form of social media. Any questions? How much do we charge them? How much do you charge? Can we charge them for the photos? Will they pay? In some cases, they will pay. That has, that's another thing that has to be worked out also, there's some kind of pay scale. Because so many people are submitting photos, that, that tends to be a problem as far as like what gets paid, you know, how you're getting paid, but you can get paid. Yeah. Right over here. Okay. I was gonna ask, um, I know you were talking about how cameras were replaced by the phones, but what about, how do you feel about optimal versus digital zoom? How cameras don't offer optimal zoom? Well, that's the fourth phase. Am I on? Uh, okay. Well, that's the fourth phase, okay? That's the fourth stage that's going to come about. Okay. Is uh, liquid lenses that are zooms. Okay. Okay, that's not here yet. Liquid lenses are here. Okay, you find them on scanners, you find them on um, lab on a chip, um, you find them in copiers, you find them in um, registers. Z liquid lenses are around. Does anybody, do, how many people understand here the principle of a liquid lens? Okay. Liquid lenses are simply this. Before I go into that, these are all pictures that were taken with the phone. All right? These are all anywhere between 11 and 18 megabyte uh, situations. UN, Central Park, Bethesda Fountain, Dr. Shakti Butler, motivational speaker, a couple of relatives of mine. I guess everybody knows where this is. New Year's Eve? No, I'm just kidding. This is a, this is a assignment. Uh, Linwood Park, Cloisters. So you can do, you can do also, you can do panel, you can be more creative now with these systems, okay, with the smartphone than you can be with the DSLR. With the DSLR, you've got to go into a laptop to do any kind of photo manipulation. With a smartphone, there's a certain amount of photo manipulation that can be done. Whatever you can't do within there, you can do on a tablet. So you keep the combination of the two together and you can create, you've got a mini studio. You can go to Starbucks, and I've gone to Starbucks. I've shot a job, going to Starbucks and delivered the job that afternoon. 
And as I said, that's how quickly, if you want to do this as a business, that's how quickly you have to operate. You, know, you can't be, well, I'll get this to you on the 32nd of the month. No, it doesn't work that way anymore. Okay. Oh, and also you mentioned being paid. That's the other thing too. When you go to these places, you should demand that, all right, I give you a picture, you know, I get paid right away or get paid within a certain amount of time. That's the most difficult transition to get over now. The companies will tell you, well, you know, we only pay, uh, you know, uh, once a year. Yeah, okay. Uh, next, you know, you're going to go somewhere else, you know, with, with, with that answer. Any questions? Yes. I understand for, for news and events, but do you get the same acceptance for, um, you know, other types of work, uh, you know, uh, things that are not as... Uh, as rush, uh, maybe, um, you know, corporate work, like, say, shooting cover of an annual report, or, or even weddings. I mean, I think that if you show up with one of, um, to shoot a wedding with a smartphone, I think you kind of get some resistance. Yeah, um, you will. You'll, you'll get, but, I mean, the proof is in, okay? You're going to get resistance, yeah. I mean, I've gotten resistant, but I mean, I use this on annual reports all the time. I've photographed a number of annual reports and different events, ARP, uh, things for Rubenstein Associates. I've photographed a number of things using the phone. Well, I mean, they know me, and they know I'll try something different. You know, I'm, I'm, up, I'm always up for a photographic challenge. You know, if you tell me you could put two Pepsi bottles together and get a picture, you know, order me a card and a Pepsi, because I'm going to try it. But you can, you can do it. You can do a wedding. You know, as a matter of fact, I had a challenge. I was trying to bet, but my companion said, you know, uh, leave, leave the guy alone. I, the guy said, you can't do a wedding. You can't do a wedding. And I said, you know, I turned around, looked at him, and said, you know, are you willing to, you know, stake a little money on that? You know, let's have a little bet. And he uh, backed off. But you can do a wedding. You can do, you, can, you know, the, like I said, all of these. You know, this set of pictures that you're seeing here, I mean, this is an effect that you can do with a smartphone. These are all done with a smartphone. This is right down in Hoboken. This is all I carry. That's all I carry. So you don't give much importance to the size of the sensor. Everybody talks about the size of the sensor. The sensor on the phone is very small. I mean... One and a half inches, yeah. And, uh, you know, people are buying a lot more money yeah, but you're getting this kind of quantity. You're getting 18 megabytes. You're getting an 18 megabyte file. I'll explain that over because it, it is it is difficult to grasp. It's not the, it's not the crowd. It's just a difficult thing to grasp that you know one day you're using you know an SLR. You know you're using one of these. God. <laughs> Which end do you look through? On this? <laughs> oh, oh, okay. No. One day you're using one of these, all right? Now you're using one of these. It's like, you know, um, one day you're using this, next day you're using a chocolate bar. Okay? I would go with this before I would go with this. And just that this is, I mean, now, I mean, and I've shot with, you know, these kind of cameras for years, okay? I've used just about every kind of equipment, you know, that you can think of. I've used like zooms, big zooms, 7150 zooms. Um, I've used a 1200 millimeter lens, Canon 1200 millimeter lens, shooting the World Cup in 94. Um, but, you know, it, it's coming to this. Somebody had a question back there? Oh, okay. Yes. So I use a, uh, I use a digital camera right. as opposed to my phone. And I've been capturing recently, uh, this has come along, very large images. I can capture 200 megabytes at a time worth of photo. Uh, and then I can go back and edit it, which I can't do with my phone. Do you think this support uh, for that kind of thing will come about? Or? Yeah, it's, I mean, if it's come down to this, if it's come to this. Listen, they used to make cameras without light meters. And now, would you go out and buy a camera that doesn't have a light meter? Or that doesn't have autofocus? Okay, so it's coming along. I mean, I'm not saying that this is the end all. I'm not saying that this is the final thing. Nakia is probably, I've called Nakia and I've said, you know, look, what have you got in mind? They said, well, we don't discuss, you know, things, you know, uh, what we're launching. 
And that told me automatically, yeah, you got something going. You know, so the next thing, probably the next one of these will be able to do laundry. <laughs> All right? This, it can't go anywhere else but up. It can't. The quality, I mean, again, you know, here you go. Any other questions? But there are no, are there no lens controls, uh, aperture controls and things like that. This is aperture control. This is ISO control. Um, this is also has a white balance to it. You can get effects. You know, you can get like about six different effects with this, which I can't. I mean, I can't believe this myself. Look, I come from like 11, 14 view cameras, you know, with the hood over the head kind of situation. You know, and then now it comes down to this. But I mean, I can believe it. I'm, I've certainly got faith in this. Because if it's come that far and it's come down to this, you know, what next? I'll tell you what next. And this is off the beaten path, okay? This will, this will throw one at you. How about photographs from memories? Okay, what's he talking about? <laughs> you know, you know, is, you know, is he flipped out here? No. no, what about photographs from memories? Sit back, lean back, and think of like a pleasant situation or a traumatic situation that you've gone through. Okay, as a matter of fact, you can close your eyes and just think of one situation. Take a few seconds to, you know, to do that. Think of some of the detail, how many chairs were in the room, how many people were there, and just think of that in, in terms of a picture. Now, what if you could turn around and reproduce that memory? Okay, in other words, you could sit down, attach a few wires to your head, and, you know, you know, or your foot, I don't know, you know. And then that memory or a print of that picture would come out. Now, you think that's impossible? I'm not hearing anybody going, no. Depends on uh, your point of view and how many pixels you're entering into the uh, situation, yeah. Or how old your mind is. Yeah. Or how blurry your mind is, yeah. That's, that's what you're saying, yeah. Okay, give that one some thought. All right, I wasn't going to throw that out until the end, but, you know, but, but give that one some thought. And it is, it is a possibility. You can be wired um, to, to produce images. You can be wired to move things around. And I mean, somebody in this classroom may discover the way to do that. You know, you may go back now to your labs or wherever classrooms that, you know, you're taking courses in and say, hey, that's not a bad idea. I think I'll develop that. Yes? Getting back to liquid lens, how does that, how is that better than the standard lenses we have today? What advantages do you have with liquid lenses over uh, current lenses? And uh, where do you see that going? The question was, uh, what's the advantage of liquid lenses? Um, how good are they compared to standard lenses? Okay, first of all, you're not dealing with glass. You're not dealing with any glass. I'll, just, I'll sketch one out in a minute. Um, it's a very simple, it's very small. Uh, no, no glass polishing, which is you know, highly expensive. Okay, glass for lenses is made, starts off with a crucible. Crucible of glass is about this big, from, which is composed of sand, is about this big. And then what they do is they boil it down and boil it down and boil it down until they have a handful of glass that's so pure. And then they make a lens. With liquid lenses, liquid lenses are two, a cylinder containing two elements. One is water, one is oil. It could be an oil mixed with a chemical. The way that you focus is that wires attached to it, it's electric, and you run a current through the water to change the focus of the lens. It's called electro-wetting. Okay, you might want to write that down. And you can look that up. And it's, again, it's being done in, in, uh, on many levels.
Everybody see this? Water, oil, electrical current. Eliminates glass, eliminates space. Manufacturers are not going to want to hear about this. As a matter of fact, man manufacturers you know, aren't going to want to hear like, what I've been saying in, so far as far as smartphones because this changes, this is disruptive technology. Okay, this changes everything that manufacturers, you know, are, you know, they want to produce. Story, uh, a few years back, wow, 20 years back, the um, guy was a buyer, Jim Barger, buyer for um, WC, when WCAU was out of Philly, Channel, Channel 2 in Philly. Um, he wanted to go high eight. Everybody's using the big cameras and, you know, four or five people on a crew. So he decided, I want to go high eight. So he went to Sony and he asked Sony, uh, the Sony salesman, he says, I want to go high eight. I want to get uh, four uh, video cameras. I want to get a uh, mixing board. Uh, I want to be able to edit. And he bought it. Bottom line was it worked out very, very well. Very portable, could take it anywhere. Uh, it's unobtrusive, it's not in the way. Um, which is another thing I'll speak on, uh, uh, you know, unobtrusiveness. Um, it's not in the way, and it went well. So he came back to the Sony deal like about four months later, and he said, hey, man, he said, look, this stuff is great. He says, I want to buy four more units, you know, and send them to different CBS affiliates around the country. So the Sony rep, Sony tells him, he says, uh, uh, well, it, 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 uh, I, I can't sell it to you. He says, well, why not? He says, uh, it, it, it doesn't do laundry. So the guy said, yeah, ha ha, you know, very funny. You know, that's okay, that's, that's a snap. He says, now, I would like you to hook this up. He says, no, 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 no. He says, like, you don't understand, I can't sell it to you. He says, why not? He says, it doesn't do windows. So the guy finally says, okay, all right, look, what's the deal here? You know, why are you, you know, so I'm coming to you ordering a quarter of a million dollars worth of equipment and you're telling me you can't sell it to me? Why not? So the guy finally broke down and told him, he says, because this stuff, this equipment that you're asking for will take over the market right away. What do I do with all the equipment, the big equipment that I have in the warehouse? The stuff will just sit, collect dust, become, as I call it, paperweight, all right? So that's what's happening now, disruptive technology. What's going to happen with all these DSLRs that are out now? If you, if you notice how cheap cameras are, you know, you can almost open a box of cereal and get a camera. <laughs> giving them away at banks. They used to give away toasters at banks. Now they're giving away cameras, right? You know, like us. I mean, <laughs> you know, they're, getting, they're getting ridiculous. So what happens from this point? Manufacturers, as they have been since autofocus first came into play, are going to suffer. They're going to take a hit, big hit. They'll make money, you know, but they're going to have to get into a different, manufacturers are going to have to get into a different business. When people start seeing what you can do with something this size, okay, that you don't have to get out there, because I know what you're talking about. You're talking about when a, a client, you know, you get hired by somebody and they say, you know, you're walking with something like this, and they want to know, well, where's your Ikigami 79D? You know, where's, uh, you know, where's the lights? Where's uh, all, that's another thing that's coming down also, the way you'll be able to light stuff with this is a lot simpler. Okay, but it's, it's gonna turn around. It's gonna become acceptable. Just as like um, pocket cameras became acceptable, right? Okay, it's the same thing with this. This is gonna become acceptable. Questions? Yes. So do you think like photographers are going to take a hit? If everyone has a smartphone, how do you think the profession, the job, how do you differentiate like being a person with a smartphone? By the quality of work that you hand in. Okay, that's the thing that I want to speak on now. The quality of work, there's a lot of garbage out here now that's on social media. You know, and what you have to do is to gain some kind of ground as far as like, you know, your work, you got to shoot. 
Okay, you got to like buy something like this and take, or even with what you have now, smartphones, you know, don't take, I take that back. Smartphones, you know, all the people here that have smartphones, utilize those phones to do not only, vid not only stills, but to do video as well. Okay, because a lot of cases, the video on these things is very good. Okay, but you got to shoot. Okay, because only in shooting will you learn what the camera can do, phone can do, what the camera can't do, what you can do with it, what you can't do with it. Uh, speed in getting to certain buttons to press certain things because it's not, in many cases, you've got like a smaller pattern, but an accurate pattern. I mean, these, these phones are very good as far as like switching, even though it's very small and you got to use your fingers, you know, uh, for very small areas. Ergonomically, they're laid out, most of them are laid out very well, but you got to shoot and shoot and get more pictures and look at them. You know, it's, it's like, you, and you don't have to worry anymore about film and you know, you're wasting film and whatnot. Film or this kind of thing to me is like a sketch pad. You sketch something out, it doesn't work. Okay, you tear off a sheet, you go to another one. But this is the, the best time for creating because you don't have that, you don't have that at all. You just simply erase a flash drive or a CD, um, um, a D, What's the CDs that you can? <coughs> yeah. Um, no, 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 no. Well, DVDs are out. Right. You know, I mean, flash drives are the thing. You know, the of the the holding medium of, of the future. Holding medium now. But you've got to shoot. And I do mean shoot. Shoot everything. You know, don't 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 miss a thing. Take it, review it, look at it. You know, and then go back and shoot again. Okay. Did I mention shoot? Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know if I was clear on that or not. You know. One more question? Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Anybody? Last question? And then Mr. Cummings will stick around and oh, wow. answer That's any others. It went by fast. Henry? Yes. Yes. You right? yes. So uh, as far as <clears throat> image manipulation goes, uh, what application do you uh, primarily use? What's in the, what's in the smartphone? And then I'll take it to a tablet and use that. And if I have to go any farther, then I'll go to a photo, uh, you know, Photoshop. On the tablet, though, what? Uh, just another. On the on the on the Nokia tablet, the twenty five twenty, they've got a program that's uh, Photoshop, but it's not complete Photoshop. So you should like go Photoshop to Photoshop Express. Or yeah, right. Exactly. So what you should do then is go to um, like a Surface, right. like Surface three, which you can pick up Photoshop. Okay. You're going to have to take on a different mindset as far as shooting. Okay. Don't. Am I out of time? Just about. One okay. One. All right. I'll take another question. I'll, I'll speak to people afterwards, all right? Absolutely. Mr. Cummings will be here. We'll, we'll be in the lobby. We'll be in the lobby for the next. We'll be in the lobby for three days, okay? <laughs> so, you know, anybody who has questions, you know, take a number. Okay. Question. Has everybody here heard the word that I emphasized before? Can I hear it? Shoot. Okay, I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Shoot. All right. School, manuals are not going to give it to you. Going to school, you'll learn, you know, you'll learn your basics, but then get out of school. Get out of that class, you know. All right. Mr. Yeah. We'd like to present you. Oh. With a little something from Stevens, how about a big hand for this gentleman? Thank you. Great. A bottle of water. <laughs> a very good month. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, Thank thanks you. for coming. It was terrific. Mr. Cummings will stick around. I like how great he is. How about one more hand?